morning. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Harrison, and today we're going to be looking at the basics of SQL Server reporting services. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I am a sales engineer slash senior support uh, for Pragmatic Works. Uh, I've been here for about well, three and a half years now. And I've also taught the live and virtual SSIS and SSRS classes, which is usually where I have the most fun teaching all of these uh, different courses. So normally, I uh, put together a PowerPoint presentation to cover a lot of points on all of my previous webinars, if you've seen any of those before. Uh, but today, not so much. Um, you know, we're looking at an intro to SSRS, so we have quite a bit to go through. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to waste um, too much time with a, a boring PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so let me jump back into... Well, let me... All right, here we go. All right, so I'm jumping into SQL Server data tools. Um, for this presentation today, I'm going to be using uh, SQL Server 2012. Uh, now, 2012, of course, is going to be very different from 2005, a little bit different from 2008 and 2008 R2. Um, however, I'm going to be covering the basics of reporting services. So, you know, it's, it's going to be the same. The functionality is the same, and I don't think there's really too much of an interface difference either. Uh, now, 2005, if any of you out there are on 2005, things are going to look way different because um, they did make a lot of changes when uh, Microsoft released uh, reporting services for 2008. Then in reporting services for 2008 R2, they made a few changes, not a whole lot, uh, from 2008, but they also added a lot of extra functionality. Um, that's mainly a lot of uh, more advanced features. Um, so nothing that you'll have to worry about uh, in this presentation today. Because Again, we're sticking with just the basics. So we're going to take a look at uh, a few things today, actually. We're going to look at the environments that you'll be using. Um, you know, if you're in bids for 2008 and R2 or SSDT for those of you on 2012. And then we're going to take a look at, um, you know, basically where to start. Uh, you know, what parts of the environment you're going to be using, uh, adding data sources. We're going to create uh, a terribly, you know, little report that looks like crap. And then we're going to uh, format some things, to make a lot of changes, add a lot of things to it, um, come up with a, a really nice looking report by the end. Uh, we're also going to get into a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, grouping using parameters and also maybe some expressions. So we'll mess around with a little bit of uh, the expression language in reporting services. So I want to cover a lot of different topics, um, you know, a lot of really cool things that you can do in reporting services, but kind of keep it uh, kind of basic on all of those on all of those different fields. All right, so again, as stated, I am in SSDT, SQL Server Data Tools, uh, the replacement for bids, which I much rather prefer just saying bids, but no, they had to change it. Uh, and inside of bids or SSDT, if you're following along, all I'm going to do is create a new project. All right, now, since I have uh, SQL, Server SS, or, uh, SQL Server 2012 installed, uh, I have... You know, SSDT, basically just a shell for Visual Studio. And I have all of the business intelligence options, which you probably do as well. So analysis services, integration services. Uh, now, for reporting services, you're going to see two different options here. You have uh, Report Server Project Wizard and Report Server Project. Uh, now, the Report Server Project Wizard, that's just a, a small wizard that's going to walk you through creating a report. So it does a lot of the work for you. You basically choose a few options here and there, and uh, the data that you're looking for, it throws the report together, and then from there you can format it, make changes to it. Uh, but what I prefer to do is just have total control you know, from the ground up, so I'm going to choose Report Server Project. And let's go ahead and name this. All right, so you'll also notice the location where this is going to be saved, just a default location, putting it into your documents folder, which is fine for me. And also, as with every project that you create in Visual Studio or in Bids, uh, it's going to name the solution after the name of the project as well. 
which is fine. In my case, I don't need to make any changes to that. And OK. All right, so it opens up uh, SSDT with our Solution Explorer over here. Uh, so you should have something very similar. So I just want to cover some of the different parts of the environment that, uh, that we're going to be using. First off, the only thing that's going to be visible at the moment is the Solution Explorer. Uh, we have the name of your project. And then we have three folders underneath that. You're going to see shared data sources, uh, shared data sets, and reports. Now, some of you may not see the shared data sets. If you're on 2008, then you're not going to see that. Now, 2008R2 is where they introduced the shared data sets. Now, a shared data set, uh, we're going to talk about all of these here. Now, first off, I, actually, I should probably just start from the, from the top here. Uh, the shared data sources, this is just going to be like a connection to whatever server uh, that you're going to be pulling your information from, or whatever database instance. Uh, so we'll definitely be adding that. It's shared because when it's listed here, you can share that with any report that you have inside of the project. Uh, you also have your shared data sets for 2008 and 2012 users. Uh, the shared data set, uh, this is something that can be really cool sometimes or also kind of a headache at other times. The shared data set is a data set that uh, can be pushed out to a server and it can be used by multiple reports. So let's just say that you're inside of bids, you're creating all these different reports. Uh, a lot of them might have the same queries, but you don't want to have to keep creating the same query over and over again. Well, you can use the shared data set, that way you're only creating it once, and you can pull that data set into any reports that you're, uh, that you're creating. It's really cool because, you know, you don't have to really, you don't have to create it over and over, and let's just say that, you know, maybe there's a change to maybe a table that one of these queries is pulling out of. So if you had to change that, instead of having to change it in 20 different reports, you could just change it in one shared data set. So that's it's actually pretty cool. Uh, it can be a headache, however, if you're overusing them. You have tons of reports that are using maybe one shared data set, and you could possibly have someone come in there and not realize how many reports are using that shared data set, and then go and make a change to it and then end up breaking a bunch of reports. Um, so it's one of those things that you want to be careful. Exercise some caution there when you're using shared data sets. And then there's the reports folder. So as we add reports to a project, you'll see reports you know, lining up here. All right, so first thing I want to do is add a shared data source. So I'm just going to right click and choose add data source or add new data source. All right, so here we can name it and uh, make some sort of a connection. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this. Uh, I'm going to be connecting to the AdventureWorks databases today. Uh, um, so I'm going to use that for, for the report that I'm going to write, that we're going to write. Uh, now, again, this is going to be the same I, for 2008R2, uh, or 2008, 2008R2, and 2012. So I'm just using some generic tables that exist in all three of those versions. So you can, everyone can, can, can write the, the same uh, queries here. So I'm just going to give this some kind of a name, AWDW for AdventureWorks. Well, AdventureWorks Data Warehouse anyway. Uh, and the type in this box here, you'll see by default, set to Microsoft SQL Server, which is perfect. That's what we're going to be taking. However, you'll notice that with reporting services, you can connect to all kinds of different sources. So just to show you, just give you some ideas here. Um, you know, other than the SQL Server, there's uh, SQL Azure, which I believe that was added in 2008. Um, there's also the PDW, which is a brand new option. Um, there's old DB, uh, AS. That's really fun, actually. If um, you know, if you're reporting off of a uh, off of an SSAS cube, um, that's a, a pretty cool way to, to pull information. Reports are written pretty pretty easily, very fast. You know, off of uh, cubes. You can also report off of uh, Oracle, ODBC connections, um, Teradata. Uh, there's also different uh, different drivers that you could possibly download as well to connect to maybe some other obscure you know, data sources. But today we're just going to be using the Microsoft SQL Server type. 
And for the connection string, I'll just click Edit and make the connection to my server. So in my case, my server is on my local host. And the database that I'm going to be using is the AdventureWorks DW 2012. Uh, again, 2008 and 2008 R2. You can connect to the same ones if you have uh, the, the DW warehouse or the uh, DW database. All right, just text, uh, test connection. Everything's fine. And OK. And OK again. And now you see that we have our shared data source right up here under that folder. So this data source can now be used in any reports that I add to this project. All right, so data sets, shared data sets we're not really going to mess with today. Uh, so now I want to go ahead and create a report. Now if I right click on that reports folder, you have the options for add new reports or add, which will give you some, some other options. Uh, if you use this option right here, add new report, that's going to open up the report uh, wizard, which, you know, we don't really want that. We're not going to go with that today. We're actually going to build one manually. So under add, you have new item or existing item. So just choose new item. And it will ask what you actually want to create. And again, it even gives you the option for that report wizard. So everywhere you look, the report wizard is going to be there. Um, so you can add another report, another data source, or data set. So of course, I'm going to choose reports and click add. And I'm just going to rename this report over here. I'm going to call this uh, sales by state. All right, so it opens up a whole lot of stuff for us. We have this design window here. I usually like to uh, expand this design area out just so I can you know, see quite a bit more of what I'm doing. Um, and you'll also have the report data window that opens up over here. So this is pretty important. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff that we're going to be working with right here. Uh, first off, uh, you'll see this option here, built-in fields. We're going to talk about all of these different folders, so what you're getting with these, these different pieces. First, you're going to see built-in fields. Uh, these are some, uh, some things that you can actually use inside of any report, and they're right here, regardless of what data set you're using or what data source you're pulling from. Uh, these are just some built-in fields that you can drag and drop into any report. Those are just things like execution time, language, page numbers, uh, report folder, so basically, you know, once you deploy them, what folder are they reported or deployed to, and things like that. Just little options that you can drag and drop out into your report, and it just puts them into a text box automatically for you. Just like that. And the other, other uh, parts of the report data uh, window. We have uh, parameters. Uh, we're going to look at uh, some basic uses for parameters, uh, which are pretty nice. Basically, you know, something that will allow uh, your users to kind of filter through some of the data. You know, so they're 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 looking for you know specialized data. Um, there's also a place to store images, uh, data sources, which is just like, just like the shared data sources, and data sets. So the first thing I'm going to do here when you create a report is you have to add a data source. We have the shared data source over here, and you, know, you could have multiple shared data sources. So we just have to add that data source over here to the report data window. So um, keep in mind that this window over here is for your whole project and solution, and then this window over here is for each individual report. So the data sources folder, if I right click on that, you have the option to add a data source. So I can select that, and then first off, I have to give it a name. So I'm just going to name it after the data source that I'm going to be using, so our shared data source, AWDW. And down below that, you have two different options. There's the embedded connection, which means I can create another data source, like right here, that would be used only for this report. It will only show up for this report. Or I can use a shared data source reference. So this is that shared data source that I created over there in the Solution Explorer. And that's what I'm going to use. So I'll just connect to that. 
In the drop-down, I'll select it. Right, and click OK. So now you see that, that shared data source is now being used right over here. And now we need to have a data set. So a data set is where you're going to be writing queries to uh, you know, pull in data. So under data sets, if I right click, you have the option to add a data set. And it's going to ask for a name for the data sets. So in this one, you know, I normally like to name the data sets after you know, what kind of data I'm pulling back or what I'm looking at. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to call this sales by state. I'll just name it after the report. This is going to be kind of a small report, so not a whole lot of data sets going on here. And now for 2008 R2 and 2012, so for R2 and 2012 users, you're going to have that option to use a shared data set. Uh, but again, I'm not going to go with that. Uh, we, you know, we don't, don't need that. Uh, so I'm going to use a data set embedded in the report. So this is where I'm creating a data set that will only be visible for this report and listed over here in the report data section. Uh, so I've selected it you know, to, to use a, a, an embedded data set. And we have to choose the data source. So what data source are we going to be pulling our information from? And of course, I only added one data source. So I'll just select that from the dropdown. It's my only option anyway. And then you have query type. So in this case, you're going to see the options of text, which is default, and stored procedure. Using a storage procedure can be pretty cool. It's, um, I guess you could say it's similar to a shared data set in a way, uh, but it's not just something that you have right there in your solution, for example. Um, this would be a stored procedure that's actually existing in the, the database, so wherever your data source is connecting. So I'm going to use text. Below that, you can type out your query in the query window if you really want to. Um, I, however, prefer to use the query designer. So I'll just open that up and let me full screen this for you. So the query designer, uh, it makes putting together queries a lot easier. Um, you know, if you're not wanting to sit around and type out a lot of long queries or maybe you're rusty on your T-SQL. Uh, whatever the case may be, you don't want to have to type all that stuff out. So the query designer will, will just allow you to put things together you know, much easier than having to manually create these queries. Now in the query designer, you're going to have a few different sections. Uh, first we have this top section where you actually uh, add tables. Um, so I mean I could just right click and choose add table. And here I have a whole list of all those tables in my data source. And I can just choose whatever table that I want to add. Uh, you also have views and functions as well. So if you have any, you can add those. Um, below that, you're going to have a small section that will keep track of all the different columns that you're selecting from these tables. It will also make it easier to alias uh, some of these columns, uh, also add some sorting and filtering as well. And below that is a section that will actually show the entire query. So whatever query you piece together, it's going to show up here, and you can also manually edit it from, from right here. And then down below, we'll be able to test that query. So this will show the results of any query that we're testing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some tables. Uh, oh, you can also turn all of it. You can say if you don't want to see some of these, you can hide some of these just by, um, you know, just by clicking these icons up here all the way at the top. So I just got rid of our results pane. I can bring that back. All right. So I'm just going to go and throw together a query. And since we're working with the AdventureWorks database, of course, we're going to be looking at sales data. So if I right click and choose Add Table. So there's a few tables that I want to add here. Uh, let's see if I can remember which tables we have. Um, let's see, there's the fact Back to reseller sales, that's what I'm going to start with, so I'll throw that out there. Because what I want to look at is you know, how much money uh, these different stores have been bringing in uh, in different cities and different states. So I'm going to throw that out there, the fact reseller sales. Uh, I also want to know the, see, the names of the different uh, stores. So we have Dim Reseller. 
So I'll double click that one, throws that out there for me. And I also want to know where these are located. So we have a dim geography table. All right. Now you'll also notice that, and I'll close this little window out for just a second here, you'll notice that all these tables have this connection between all three of them. So there's a foreign key in each one of these tables that uh, you, know, you can use to join to the other tables, which is exactly what you want. Uh, you can also change what kind of join, because you see if you mouse over, just hover the mouse over that little diamond in the middle, it'll tell you it's an inner join. It tells you what is it, you know, what the key is that you can use for the join. It also bolds them for you right here. The foreign keys, for for example. Now you can change the type of lookup that is by clicking on it. All right, it's supposed to bring up a little, another little interface here. It's not going to do that for me. So if you right click, you can change the type of join it is by selecting all rows from one or the other. And it just did that. Let me just uncheck those. I need to do that. All right. Now, you will also encounter some cases if you're putting together some, some pretty big reports where you're having to pull data in from all kinds of different tables, you may encounter something that doesn't have a connection, like this one here. I just do a dim organization. Not going to use it, but you can see that there's no connection in this case. So one of the, the, the tricky things you're going to find is trying to find, say, if I needed this table for some reason, I would also have to find some other table that I can use to join that data, something that would join it to one of these other tables. I may not be pulling any data from whatever other table I bring in, but I'd have to use it, I have to bring it in there so I can join all that data. So I don't need that, so I'm just going to remove it. So our query is going to be kind of simple. We're only looking at three different tables. But now we have to choose what columns we want to pull back uh, from, these, you know, from these different tables. Now for the fact reseller sales, I want the sales amount, because I want to know how much money we've made, the total sales amount we've made from these different places. So I'll choose sales amount. And then for dim reseller, I want to know the reseller name. So I think we actually have, I probably passed it, because I always do that. Let's see, we have the oh, reseller name. Here it is. So reseller name. I think that's all we need from that one. And then for dim geography, I want to get the city and also the state. <clears throat> now, with the AdventureWorks databases, you have to be careful because there's uh, two different types of states here. There's a state province code and a state province name. State province code is going to be like FL for Florida, CA for California, you know, just the abbreviations. Uh, state province name is going to be the full name. Now, in this case, I'm only going to look at data from the U.S., so state province code is just fine for me. However, we, you will find that we do have to do a little bit of extra work with our query at the bottom um, because you know, this is going to actually pull back data from all over the world. So using state province code, you're also going to see some weird numbers in there as well, I think for like France or something like that. Um, so to see, just to see if our basic query is working, we have the exclamation point right up here at the top of the uh, query designer. If you click that, it'll run that query. And I can see results right down here at the bottom. So you can see we're pulling back sales amounts, reseller names, city, and states. Exactly what I want. So I have to change that a little bit, though, because I only want information from the US. So I've got to have a where clause here. So where, let's see, that was a dim geography. dot country region code. Oh, you know what? Okay, no, never mind. I'm fine. Uh, country region code equals US. All right, run that again just to make sure we got it, and everything's working just fine. So we're just looking at the US now. So down here at the bottom, just click OK. You'll see you have your query right there, and OK again. So now we have the query, we have our data set, and you can see the different columns that we're pulling back from that data set. All right, so now we can see how we want to use this data. How can we display it? Well, let's see, I've got, what is that? Ah, the toolbox over here. Um, some of your windows may show up different depending on how you've configured them. 
I just reinstalled uh, my SQL Server instance and SSR or my whole uh, SSDT. So I have default settings here. So the toolbox is just kind of out here. I'm just going to pin it to the uh, to the side so we have it out there all the time now. Over here in the toolbox, you're going to see lots of different uh, objects that you can use. So text boxes, lines, tables, rectangles, images. Uh, you have some advanced features down here, such as the subreports, charts, gauges, uh, maps, spark lines for Rachel, and uh, indicators. So lots of cool things that you can use to put together amazing reports, all kinds of different ways that you can visualize data and, and show that off to people. Uh, now, of course, we're just looking at the basics today. Uh, so I'm going to grab a table, just a regular old table, and drag that in. All right, so if we wanted to throw together a... Uh, you know, just a, a basic report off the data that we've received, or off the data that we're, we're pulling from this query. We have three columns here. So jump back over to your server, or no, uh, report data. So the report data. And now we're basically just going to drag and drop the information that we want into the tables. So you don't have to do this part. I'm just going to give you kind of a, this is how you basically do it, and this is what you end up with kind of scenario. Uh, let's just say that first we want to look at the state province code. And I'll just throw that in. As I drag it over the design window here, you'll see that first column lights up blue. So I'm just going to dra just drop it right there. It gives me my column header, state province code, and gives me the, uh, the value. So it's going to be the state province code value. And next, I want to take the city. So I want to see, you know, in every state, and then down to every city, and then the reseller name, why not? We'll look at that. And then the sales amount. Now, I've run out of columns, but you'll see if I just drag it out here and I mouse over that very edge, you see that blue eye bar pops up. Well, if I do that, if I drop it right there, it's just going to tack it onto the end of that table. So now I have my other column. So I've thrown all the stuff out here that I want to see. Now up at the top, you'll see you have the design tab that we're on. There's a preview tab. If you hit that preview tab, it's going to display the information. So here we go. We're using a query to pull back information. Looks terrible, though. And I don't think you'd ever want to show this report to anyone. But this is the basic idea. We're pulling back information. You can see state province code, their city, the reseller name, the sales amounts. Up here at the top, you'll see the different uh, page numbers. I can go all the way to the end. I have 883 pages, which is pretty awful. So now we can actually go into cleaning it up and actually making a decent report. So this table, I'm just going to blow it away because I don't, don't really want it. All right, so now in the toolbox, drag out another table. And we're going to change this up a bit and make it uh, more pleasing to read. So let me uh, extend this out a little bit. All right, so for this report, we're basically going to do a little bit of grouping here. So we can make it, first off, look uh, somewhat appealing. We can group objects together. You'll see down at the bottom, you have two different windows, row groups and column groups. The row groups are going to be used for tables because you can group things on rows. Column groups, well, that's for a matrix. If we put a matrix report together, you could group on rows and columns. So the first thing I want to do, we have our, our table out here. I want to take the uh, state province code, because we're going to look at everything by, on a state-by-state -state basis, first off. And I want to drag that all the way down to the bottom under row groups. Now, you'll see if you want to make it, you want to put it right above details. We have a details group, so you just want to get it to where you see that blue bar. It pops up for a second, and then just drop it in there. So now at the bottom, I have my state province code and the details underneath. Let me just uh, bring this up a bit. There we go. So next, I want to group my city. So if I take the city, I can drop this down here underneath state province code. So again, between state province code and details is where you want that. Now, you'll also notice right up here, it's adding more columns. It's kind of funny how it does that. It doesn't put them into the columns that are available. 
because everything that's already there is considered the details group. So it's going to add a new column. And you'll also see it has this dotted line right here that separates your group from the detail group. All right, so now we want to take the reseller name. So you want to split everything up by reseller name. And we're going to drag that down right underneath city. So we're keeping all that in the groups. And then we want to look at sales amounts. So here's where we're going to make things a bit different. Uh, if you drag sales amounts, we're not going to drag it to the, our row groups. In this case, we're going to take sales amount and drop it right over here inside the column, right there in the table. So that automatically makes it part of the details group. So it's going to make the data look a little funny if we, if we run the report, um, because it's, you're going to have some issues with the actual number that shows up there. So what we want to do here is go down to this details group, right-click details, and you'll see the option to delete group. So that's what we want to do. So just click that. Don't do anything else. Just click delete group. And you get this window asking you about you know, the group you're deleting. You have two different options here, and you want to be careful with these. Uh, there is delete group and related rows and columns, which we do not want. And then there's delete group only. So this is what we're looking for. So just to delete the group only. And then click OK. So it removes that, that group, the details group from our row groups. So now, up here at the top, if I click, I'm going to click on, or, or mouse over anyway, the, the text box, you see you get this little icon showing up. So you want to click on that. It opens up this other menu with all the different, uh, all the different column names that we're pulling back. Well, you want to click sales amount again. What that's going to do, if you do that, it, it will sum the information. So now it's summing it for us. So we're grouping by state, then grouping by city, and then by reseller name, and then showing the sum of their sales amounts. How many total sales do we get? All right, now these extra columns that, are, that were out here, if you just get these, uh, these gray, if you just click on the, the tables and get the, this gray bar up here, uh, I'm just going to right click on that and delete those columns because I don't need them for anything. We'll expand these out a little bit so we can have some better visibility. You can also change these column headers up at the top. You don't have to have state province code. Uh, I can just go in there and just make it states, for example. Now, we also want to do a little bit of formatting because, you know, you normally, you know, when you look at reports, just for ease of readability, uh, you would want to have the column headers have some sort of coloring. At least I do, anyway. So if I select that and then just click the, the little gray handle over here in front of that whole row, it will select the whole row for you. And then what we want to do is go to the Properties window. It's, for me, it's right down here in the lower right corner of the screen. Um, some of you may get uh, some extra toolbars up here at the top. Oh, actually, mine's right here. I could also change the colors with these right here, which I'll probably do a little bit easier. Sorry to jump around. I had a lot of coffee this morning. Um, so I'm going to select, with, or with this whole row selected, I'm going to choose background color. And it's just going to bring up this little color window. You can choose any color that's pleasing. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to grab one of these and click OK. So you see it changes that background for me. Since that row is still selected, I'm also going to click the, uh, the bold button up here for the font so I can bold all those column header names. All right. So now let's go ahead and preview the report. If I click the preview tab, here's how the report's going to look now. A little bit easier to read than the, the previous junk report that I created. Now we have our column uh, headers. Uh, you can see the different groups. I'll zoom in on this for a little bit here. So you can see the different groups. We have the uh, state of Alabama, uh, the cities, the different reseller names, so the different stores they have in those cities, and the total sales amount. And you can also notice that the sales amount isn't formatted the way we'd really prefer. Now, you're still going to end up with quite a few pages in this case, not as many as before since we're grouping, so it makes it a little easier. Um, you know, we're cutting out some of the information, but 10 pages in this case. So we have 10 pages. 
So things that we want to change to make this a little bit easier to read. Uh, if I jump back over to the design tab, first thing I want to do is format the sales amount over here because it just drives me crazy if I don't have you know monetary amounts formatted as money. You will find in reporting services that there are a few ways that you can handle all your formatting. Uh, in this case, all I'm going to do is right click on the text box and there's one thing you got to be careful of here because sometimes you could right click on like highlight the text and right click and that's not what you want because in that case you're going to see placeholder properties. So properties on whatever is going to show in that text box or whatever is in that one particular text box. Now what you want to do is make sure you're not highlighting anything. Just right click inside that text box to where it says text box properties. All right, and if you select that, you get quite a different or quite a few different options for your text box. The one thing I want to look for is number. So this is where you're going to handle all of your formatting for numbers. The options that you have are uh, you know different, different little options such as number, currency, date, percentage, things like that. We want the currency uh, format, of course. So I'll select that. You can set your decimal places if you don't want decimal places. You can just set that to zero uh, using comma as a 1,000 separator and how you want to display negative numbers. So for my report, I'm just going to set it up the way that I prefer. So just throwing in a comma and negative numbers showing the negative sign. All right, I'll click OK. It's formatted now, so if we check out that report again, there we go. Now you can see the sales amounts. You know, how the sales amount is uh, formatted properly this time. So that makes it a little bit easier to read. So now we're going to do something else that's uh, actually pretty awesome. Um, the report looks good. You know, you've got you can easily see the different states, you know, where the states are. But what if you are giving reports to um, someone that's maybe a, a regional manager over lots of different states? and they just want to look at certain ones at a time. Well, this is where we can have some fun with grouping. Um, first thing we want to do, we can actually make these collapsible. So right down here under your row groups, uh, we want to go down to city. Now if you right click city and look at the group properties, it's going to bring up some other options for you. You have your general uh, properties, page breaks, sorting uh, features, we want to click on visibility. All right. Now, when the report is initially run, um, you want to click hide. So when it's initially run, it's hidden. And also, right down here, display can be toggled by this report item. I want to select that. And then in the drop down, I believe I'm looking for state province code. I say I believe because there are times when it will normally be the text box name basically and sometimes dropping the field in there isn't going to name your text box. So you'll end up with text box 36 or whatever. So it's a good idea to look at the name of the text box before doing this. But this is pretty basic so it's probably this one here. So state province code and click OK. And then I want to do the same thing for reseller name. If I right click reseller name and look at the group properties go to visibility I want to hide that initially and then for display can be toggled by this report item I'm going to make this uh, toggled by city okay so now if we run this report check that out now I've got it all down to one page so it's now a one-page report, and you can see everything by state. And this is also what I really like about this grouping feature. Uh, check out the sales amounts. You can see like Alabama, for example, 45,429.03. If I expand that, it's going to basically you know, take that down to each city level. So it aggregates all that for us um, when, it's, you know, when it's collapsed. And then I just expand it. And now I can see the different cities. And then I can just go into the different city that I want, like Birmingham, for example. So this makes it a lot easier for readability. I don't have to sift through pages upon pages. And you know, I can look at just the ones that I want. Like you know, I can just scroll down here to Texas 
and open that up. And then I can look at each individual city if I choose to. So that makes it a lot easier to handle. Now we can take that a little bit further. Uh, we can do some, some other really cool stuff with this. This is where we're going to get into a little bit of parameters. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you some basic uses for parameters and how users can, you know, your, your reports, your end users can use this for um, specifying exactly what they're looking for. So for this, I'm going to change our query a little bit. So sales by state, or right click on that, go to the data set properties. And right here, I just want to add something to this in my where clause. So I'm going to say and, I just jump down here for, actually let me uh, break this up a little bit. Okay, so and, Dim geography dot, uh, what is that, state province code equals at symbol and state. Now this is, uh, uh oh, that's not what I wanted, copying and pasting now. Uh, here we go. So this is rather important. When you see this in a query, and dim geography dot state province code I'm going to go back and uh, correct that, equals at state. That at symbol right here, that is stating that you have a parameter. We're now going to create a parameter. Let me fix my spelling. All right, state province code. There we go. Now, when I click OK, you'll notice right up here at the top, the your report data parameters now has a plus sign. So I can expand this out and I can see our parameter. So now if I run that report, you'll notice nothing shows up and it's waiting for the user to provide a state. So now I can go and look at California. And the grouping is still there. I can expand it and I can see all the cities in California. Now this is really cool, but what if we have a misspelling? You're not going to see anything. So you do want to be careful when you have uh, parameters. Uh, I'm going to show you the next step with this, you know, what we're going to do, how we're going to make it to where you can kind of safeguard yourself against that. But what if I wanted to look at California and Washington? Not going to see any data, even though you know California and Washington are there. Well, this is because of the way the parameter was added. Uh, basically, when you add a parameter, it's plugging that into the query. So it's looking at where state equals California, comma, Washington. So of course, it's not going to come up with anything. It's not set up for multiple values. And we're going to look at that in a moment as well. So jump back over to the design window. We've got 15 minutes. So hopefully I can finish this up in 15 minutes here. Um, let's see. The query, we want to change that query. So jump back into data set properties. And what I want to do instead is toss in a parameter, get rid of that at symbol. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, nope. <laughs> uh, get rid of the equal sign, change that to in, and then parenthesis at state, and then a closing parenthesis. All right. So that's going to make it to where we can have multiple choice. All right. So uh, let me also just to double check. One way you can check this, go into the data set properties, open query designer, and then run that query. It should ask you for a parameter. And I'll just fill this in real quick with California, comma, Washington. Oops, it may not have liked my space. Let me do that again. Huh, still not like that. Oh, well, we'll check that out in just a moment. Just let me grab California. Okay, so pulls back California, so we'll check on that in just a moment. So now, all right, so now we want to make it to where you don't have, your end users don't have to type something in because that can lead to a disastrous effect. Because right now I look at my, you know, my reports. 
can still see California, but again, someone could make a typo, and then they're going to blame the report writer for making a bad report. So in parameters, if you right-click that state parameter and click parameter hey. properties, hey, Sean. there's a lot of different things that you can do to change your parameters. Um, yes? I hate to interrupt, but um, some of the audience members are suggesting... Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Some of the audience members are suggesting that you may need single quotes instead of double, and that might be your uh, problem with your parameter list. Oh, could be. Could be. Um, that has been known to happen, because I always mess up uh, parentheses and commas. Parentheses, commas, and uh, quotes are like my worst enemy. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We'll take a look at that. Um, so in the report parameter properties, here's what we want to do. You'll see that the it will detect the data type for you automatically in most cases. It does a pretty good job. Um, there's a few extra things you can enable to allow blank values, allow nulls, or multiple values. So that's one option we're going to use right there in just a moment. However, you also want to click on available values. Now, there are three options here. By default, it's going to be set to none. This means that you know there's no available values. The user is going to have to type them in manually. You can specify your values, which if you want to sit there and type in 50 states, go right ahead. Probably not the best idea, though. But then there's get values from a query. Here's where we can start adding other queries to the report. So select that option. And you know what? It would really help if you added the query first. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, let me cancel out of there. And under data set, right on the data set folder, just want to right click and choose add data set. So we're going to add our new data set. Now one thing that you want to keep in mind when using multiple um, data sets in a report, you want to make sure that you're naming them properly. Now since I'm using this query to set up a parameter, I'm going to name it after the parameter, so state, and then per And again, embed a data set in my report. So I'll choose the data source, open up Query Designer real quick, just because I'm, I'm kind of lazy. And I'm just going to add one table in this case. And that's going to be the DIM geography table. And the only thing I want to pull out of here is the state province, uh, state province code. Now, of course, I do want to keep this limited. Uh, to the US. So first thing I want to do is add a WHERE clause. So WHERE, uh, let's see, some copy and pasting, dim geography dot, oh, nope, dim geography uh, dot country region code equals US. All right, let me just, there we go. One other thing that you're going to want to do, which is something that I usually forget quite a bit, a lot of people do, we're trying to pull back a list of states. Now, in this case, you can see from our results, it's pulling back Alabama, however many times Alabama shows up inside of the database. So I want to add a distinct here. If I could remember to type correctly. Distinct. OK, yeah, I got it. All right. So that's going to limit it. It's going to limit your results. And OK. All right, and click OK again. So now we have this other data set here. So now we're going to go back to the parameter, right click, and go into Parameter Properties. And on Available Values, choose Get Values from a Query. Here it's going to ask you for the data set. So what data set is it going to be? And you can see, if you can imagine, if you had, wait a minute. Oh, uh, no, it's going to crash on me. Hmm. Darn, well, that wasn't very nice at all. Um, please be there, please be there, please be there. Okay. Oh, it didn't save the last data set. Wow, that wasn't very fun at all. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, let me just go ahead and throw that data set back in there again and save it promptly. One thing's for sure, I'm glad I updated to an SSD. Everything comes back real fast. All right, choose my data source. And let me throw that table in there again. Yep. 
And we're looking for state province code. All right, so distinct where dim geography dot country region code equals US. Oh. Okay, excellent. Okay, save it this time. And for the states, we'll go back and do that again. So available values, get values from a query. So state parent, oh, come on. Hmm. Okay, I can definitely see that zooming in right there is a bad idea. And now it's not restarting for me. Sorry about that, guys. You know, anytime I ever have problems with technology, as far as BI, it's always reporting services. Always. Okay. So this time I saved it. So now go back into parameter properties. I'm not going to zoom in this time. So I'm going to choose the state parameter. What I was trying to point out is you can see how when you start using multiple data sets and multiple parameters, how it can start causing you know, some problems if you don't name those data sets accordingly. So choose the option here for the value field and label field. Of course, you're only going to have one choice. And click OK. Now when we preview the report, you have a drop-down list to select a value. So this time, it's not, you know, you, you don't have to depend on your end users to type their options correctly. They can just go through here and choose them. And then view report. It's going to pull back data only for the states that they're looking for. Now, if I jump back into those parameter properties and choose allow multiple values, and OK. So here's where we can try and see if I can fix my query, whatever's wrong with it. So now when you, you'll notice though that when you, and I'm scared to zoom in here, uh, but when you uh, set that to allow multiple values, all of these options now have checkboxes. So I can check uh, California and Florida, for example, and then view the reports. Ah, there we go. OK, so the query is working for whatever reason. I probably messed something up in the query designer when testing it. But you can see that the query is working. So I can pull back multiple states in this case. And I can also get Connecticut, Colorado, a few of those. You see it just keeps adding up here. And I can expand only the ones that I need. So we've taken uh, some pretty basic information, put it into a nice, uh, simple report, uh, very straightforward, very concise. And again, the things that we uh, covered here, uh, creating the data sources and data sets, also uh, using row groups uh, and making those groups collapsible and expandable, and also dabbled in parameters a bit. Now, you will see situations with parameters, because you can do some really awesome things with parameters. You'll see situations where you have what's called cascading parameters, where you have multiple data sets uh, for all these different parameters, and you can choose your state, and then you might have a parameter for the city in that state, and then for the reseller in that state. So as you choose the you know, parameter, you have another one to further specify you know, what you're looking for in that, you know, in that regard, in that, in that area. All right, let's see, jumping back over, that's actually all that I have for you today, although we have time for anyway. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for, uh, uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, I, oh, well, that wasn't fun. There we go. Uh, I do have my contact information here. Um, so if you do have any other questions or anything like that, uh, you know, feel free to shoot me some emails. Uh, also, I do blog. Uh, when I remember it's there. Uh, everyone's want to do have the opportunity. I do uh, blog quite frequently at BIDN.com. And also my Twitter handle, you know, if I ever do say anything you find interesting. Uh, but again, thanks everyone. Uh, I will upload the uh, project if you want it. I can upload that later on and uh, have information on that available to you very soon.